Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Parks and Tech. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a trail camera from IC iClover. This is their newest 2021 model and has a max of 20 megapixel photos and 1080p video resolutions. A huge thank you to IC iClover for sending this out for my unbiased review. At the time of creating this video, the camera is on sale at Amazon for $69.99 US, and there might even be a coupon to be applied as well. Check out the link in the description below. Let's take a quick look at the packaging. The top of the box has some of the features. 1080p HD video, 2 inch LCD screen, 0.2 second trigger speed, 130 degree wide angle lens, IP65 waterproof rating. This is the front of the packaging. This side has the packing list. This is the back. Here are some of the key features of this camera. 16 megapixel 1 to 3 photo burst mode. It has a few different modes including photo only, video only, photo and video only, and a time lapse mode. It has a 0.2 second trigger speed, 8 to 10 month standby mode with 8 AAA batteries, these are not included. Improved PIR, has a detection range of about 70 feet or 23 meters max. An upgraded CMOS sensor. It does include a micro SD card in the packaging and can support up to 32 gigs. It features a 2 inch TFT LCD color screen. This does have a 12 volt DC plug and therefore can be powered by a solar panel if you want to do that and don't want to use the batteries. Nothing on the bottom. This is everything you get in the box. Mounting strap, which is typically what I use. Metal mounting plate and mounting arm. Mounting screws and plugs. An Allen key for tightening, more on that later. Micro USB cable for firmware updates. A well written instruction manual with diagrams in a few different languages. And finally, the camera itself. Let's take a closer look at the camera. Here are the IR lights, the 130 degree wide angle camera lens, three motion sensors pointing in a few different directions, to the side is the clasp to open and close the camera, the back has some mounting options and a unique lock to keep the camera closed if you wish to lock it, keep in mind the lock itself is not included. This side has the hinges, the bottom of the camera has a tripod mount, battery tray, and our 12 volt connection for another power option. And again, this does support a solar panel if you want. The solar panel is not included. Nothing on the top. And that brings us back to the front. To open the camera, pull on the clasp on the side, it will open towards you. On the inside, you have a little quick start guide, which is nice. Be careful with this cable as it connects the motion sensors to the main board. This is the 2 inch color LCD screen. Eject button. On, test, and off switch. Control panel for navigating the menu menu or mode button, and OK button. On the other side, we have our SD card slot and micro USB slot. The SD card is included and came pre-installed. It is a micro SD card inside the full size adapter. They say this camera can support up to 32 gig cards. So if you get any SD card errors, make sure your card is compatible. For this review, I am using the card they sent with the camera. Press the eject button to eject the battery tray. I 
I use the Amazon Basics batteries and have never had a problem. Once your batteries are installed correctly, push the tray back in until you hear the click. For setup, switch the camera to test. Press the M button to access the modes and menu. Use the arrows to navigate and the OK button to select. Here are the modes. Photo only, video only, or photo and video. That's the mode I prefer. Next we have our PIR interval. I will leave mine on the default 15 seconds. Next we have our PIR levels. You can select high, medium, or low. I always like to start out on medium, but the default was high, so I will keep it there this time. You can adjust the IR lamps to adjust to what you're using the camera for. This camera is not for hunting, but I want the best for wildlife, so I'll leave mine on hunting mode. You can set your amount of images captured per burst. I always go for the max. We can set our video length. I normally like 30 seconds. Next, we can set our video resolution. I like the max of 1080p. You can set the menu for a few different languages. Here is where we can set the date and time. You can set the date and timestamp settings on or off. I like mine on. You can set your photo resolution. For this video, I will set it to the max of 24 megapixels. This is where you can do the firmware updates. This does have a built-in microphone, and you can turn it on or off. Time-lapse settings. Timer settings. You can set a camera name if you want. You can set a security code for the menu if you want for added security. Here's where you can format the SD card. I always recommend doing this for the first time, even with a new or used card. You can set the settings back to default, change the date format to your liking, change your temperature units of measure, and that's all the settings. Press M to go back. Pressing OK will allow you to view any of the photos or videos. Press the down arrow to go back to the main screen. Pressing the right arrow will trigger the camera. That's all the settings. Turn off the camera and let's get this thing mounted. To use the metal plate and arm for mounting, unscrew this bolt. Put the plate on the screw and put back on the bolt to secure it. Make sure this is as tight as you can make it. You may need to use tools for the best results. This top part will go into the tripod mount on the camera.
You then use the included Allen wrench to adjust the angle of the camera. Once you have your desired position, tighten the screws on both sides as tight as you can. You'll then use the mounting screws and plugs to attach the plate to your location. I will be using the strap only to mount this. Now that I have mine mounted to my desired location, it is time to double check our settings. Switch to test mode, and if everything looks good, turn the camera on. Then you wait. What did you think of the samples on this one? Let me know in the comments below. All in all, this is not a bad draw camera at all. It's very easy to set up and use. The overall image quality is not the best, but by far not the worst, and is very good for this price range. The audio quality was what I would expect out of a trail camera. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. It has been out in the pouring rain, heavy snow and winds, and no moisture got inside. I did test this with a solar panel, and it worked flawlessly. This is a brand I've never heard of before, and when they reached out and wanted me to make a video on their camera, I couldn't say no. I always like looking at brands I've never heard of. All of my interactions with ICI Clover have been great and helpful. For the price, I have to say this one is worth it. They always have sales on these too, which make it even more appealing. If you're looking for a great starter draw camera, you can't go wrong with this one. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you haven't already, Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss a day when I post a new video. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.